So this is step two of three steps to make a clean installation of DGIS Reloaded for CR6 on your system. The first step uh, video talked about putting in mainsail OS onto a Raspberry Pi. So now we have a baseline installation, but it's missing important files like printer.cfg. And there are elements uh, in the default installation that need to be modified to make DGIS Reloaded actually function. So now I'm going to take you into the repository for the Clipper component, which is here. And I talk about releases because releases are very important. This is where people get messed up. Uh, this in GitHub looks for all the world like you could just start probing around here and taking what you want. But you don't really know whether I've changed that since the release was made or not. So it's not really a safe practice. Best place to go when you're on GitHub taking open source firmware from anybody is to look for the releases section. Look for the tag that says latest and just go there. Now you know you're dealing with the latest formal release that I've done my best to make sure is, is complete. And down at the bottom there'll always be a section called assets. It might sometimes be closed up. You open it up and you find source code. It's in two different formats. Same thing in both files. Take whichever one you like. Whether it's the tar gz here or it's source code.zip. I like the zip. And download that in your browser. It's the easiest. Just click on the link. Wait for it patiently to tell you that it's done it. And then expose that file. and unpack that file. So when I try to extract this, I'm going to have a problem with the length of the file names, and I know that because I've done it already. And what it took to unpack this was to extract all, put contract the shrink, let's say the folder name, right down to 1.2.8, so I know what it is, on the D drive, right, and extract from there. And if we look inside here, this is the same structure you saw on GitHub. Same contents, except now this is all baselined together. And uh, disappointingly, I forgot to rename the README file in this particular <laughs> release. So it says 1.7, but it means 1.8. Uh, my bad. Most of what you're looking for is right in here, related changes. It'll say, with very verbose titles, this is why I had a problem. Which motherboard do you have? It's the one of the Creality boards. Then you need to flash one of these to the motherboard. So if it's um, the Creality board, you, that's your Clipper bin file. You don't have to do the make flash business. Just take that file, flash it to your printer, and you'll be able to continue to run Clipper with it. It doesn't care if DJS Reloaded is there or not. But once you've got the DWIN set on there, that will allow the printer to communicate with it. And these files are separated by motherboard. Choose the one that is yours. So let's say I have an ERA board, so I would go here. And these files are the ones I would copy. You can leave out docs, zip, don't need that. But when you see CFG or CONF, those files are the ones we're going to copy up to our main sale installation. We come back to Mainsail, Machine tab, Config Files folder, Upload File. We navigate to D Drive 1.2.8 folder, Contents, and Related Changes. We go to the Creality motherboard, in my case, overwrite these Clipper host files for ERA1103. We select them all. We deselect README and in this case docs.zip. We're going to take development macros even though it doesn't have the uh, CFG suffix on it yet. I've corrected that at the next release. And we say open. 
tells you what's going on, takes away the messages when all is good. You can limit how many files are shown on a page. Rather than change page just to see one more file, I can increase that limit. So there are a total of 11 files now in my config section on my mainsail OS. And that's as far as we can take the mainsail files until we get the printer connected and we have the interface and we can start calibrating things. Uh, so the next thing we're going to do is install a Python application called stable underscore z underscore home. And what it's for is to um, ensure that when we do probe the bed, the measurements we're making are consistent over a sample size so that we know we can trust that the gauge is functioning at the time and the, and the values, if they all fall within a reasonable threshold of one another, are reasonable values to use. So I'm going to take you to his, uh, his GitHub page and show you how we get that in. I have referenced stable Z home in CR6.CFG. It's here, right? stable Z home. And I have given you the URL to go to so you can get it in. So let's copy that paste it here and go. This fella is from the Voron community and he's developed this for his Voron. He explains kind of the physics of what his troubles were and I think uh, they're very similar to the issues we have with the CR6 gauge. So I embraced this as, uh, as a good way to make my system much more reliable and I built it into my macros, so if you don't want to use this, you'll have to undo what I did. Uh, much easier if you embrace what I've done here. <laughs> Just go with the flow. So what he's telling you to install this thing, he's saying clone this repository into the home directory of your Pi. Now, he doesn't tell you how to do that. I'll let you in on the secret. And in order to get to the Pi and, uh, and start issuing commands to and from the Pi, we're going to need something, a utility that's called PuTTY. So PuTTY is available. It's free. Just Google PuTTY download and it will take you to their page. The latest release as of uh, August 26th, last update is 0.79. I happen to have a 64-bit Windows computer, so I'm going to download that installer. You had other choices there if that's not what you're using. And I'm going to run that installer. It's already there. So here, you would say, go ahead and go next. I can say repair to force this issue. So we install the PuTTY utility, and then we're done with this. So to get to PuTTY, we go to recently installed PuTTY. We gave our Pi a name. We can use it here. He just reloaded dot local port 22 SSH protocol open. That gives us our window to log in. Our user ID on our Pi is Pi. You type your password. I'll type mine. We are in, and we are in the home directory as instructed. Okay, so now that we're in the home directory, I'm going to show you how to do cloning. Right at the top of the GitHub under this code button, you'll see the word clone, HTTPS or GitHub client. So we want HTTPS, which is the default. These, this icon here is a shorthand for copy. If you push the copy button with your left mouse button, it confirms copy to clipboard. And we now return to PuTTY and you type git, G-I-T space, clone space, and right click the window to copy, paste rather from the uh, clipboard to this window, hit return. And there it is, it has cloned his repository into the home directory. 
which was exactly what he said to do. Now what we're going to do is change directory. I can't just copy this block because he's included the prompts, unfortunately, in the code block. And the prompts don't make sense to the pi. I've changed directory. Now I go back and I copy this instruction here, which he promises me creates a link, a symbolic link. Gotta love Unix and its uh, vocabulary. Between where the actual Python application is and Clippy Extras folder, so that when Clipper runs, Clippy will enumerate this Pi application along with all the others when it scans extras, even though that's not where it is. This link makes it look like that's where it is for Clippy's purposes. So we do that, and we're done. And that is now all you have to do to install the, the stable Z Home Pi on this machine. We can X out of there. Sure. There's nothing else to do on the Pi, and I've already done this business that he's calling for here, where he's talking about what he's calling Clipper config file. It's actually called printer.cfg, but you can include additional files into printer.cfg, and Clipper will make it look like it's all one big file went to itself when it gets started. So cr6.cfg is where I put stable Z home. <gasps> he said Z. And there it is. Stable Z Home's already here. It's already configured. So we're done with that. And the other thing we need to do now is install T5 UID 1. This is the um, Pi application that is the core of the DJS Reloaded interface. It is where all the smarts are that help the DWIN set speak through that Clipper bin file. To this Pi host. And to put that one on, we need yet another utility. Search for FileZilla download. I happen to have a Windows machine, so that's what I do. I click there and I say, Yes, please, I'd like it that one. I've already installed FileZilla, so I don't need to go through that. So I'm not going to bother going through the motions. There it is. You know how to install software by now. And I'm already logged into my Pi here. Let me do that again. I will clear the history. I will clear the quick connect bar. So under host, we put our DGIS reloaded name again. Reloaded.local. Our username is still pi. It's still the pi that we're logging into. Same password as last time. Port is still 22. Connect. This, I, when I came here, we were already logged into the pi. So anytime you try to change the connection, you'll get this message. Or we can just say, always do that. So here's how this works. I am now looking at my PC on the left. This is my D drive. And I'm looking at the Pi on the right. This is the home directory. And there's my Clipper installation with Clippy Extras. All right. There's the symbolic link in the Extras looking just like a regular folder. And what I want to do is navigate into that 128 folder I created into the contents of the repository at release 128. I've done all the related changes. Now where I'm going is Clippy. Folders are always at the bottom. Extras. T5 UID 1. Doesn't exist yet on this uh, Pi, so I'm. But I am in the extras folder. So if I right-click on that, create directory, it must be spelled exactly T five U I D one. 
okay, which matches what I had. And to put these files into it, with FileZilla, you double click on the file you want to copy, and it will put it in the folder you're presently looking at on the other system. So you just double click each of these files, and they are now on your Pi installed. Now we need a DGIS Reloaded subfolder. So again, right click, create directory, DGUS underscore R-E-L-O-A-D-E-D. -E -D. Okay. Enter that. Enter that on your PC. Double click each of the files that are here to put them on the Pi. And that is it. You now have your DGIS Reloaded Python applications and configuration files installed in Clippy Extras on the host. And when we reboot, Clippy will find it. And as long as the configuration file syntax is correct and it recognizes everything we reference, we're good to go. So we can return to our system. We've installed the main sale files. We've installed stable Z home. We've now installed the DGIS related, uh, reloaded Python applications. The printer itself is not yet connected to this host, so it will not successfully boot into Clipper. But let's do the firmware restart. And I'm in luck. I didn't mess anything up and I didn't leave anything out. If you have red here with an error message, the message hopefully is clear enough for you to troubleshoot. You'll need to figure out which step you missed, which thing got lost or corrupted. But um, I'm now ready to take this machine downstairs that I've configured, connect it to my printer, and proceed to step three where I put the DGIS Reloaded interface onto the display and then I can use that to perform the calibrations I'm going to need to perform like PID and APL which I could do from this interface truly but for the sake of the videos I'm going to go straight through to step three. I'll see you step three. By the way that this will eventually give up trying to connect and it will turn red but it'll say uh, your MCU is not responding so that's what's happening there. As long as you got to this blue uh, message screen first, you're good to go to the next step. See you at step three.